welcome back to life literature we are going to start with a new poem today to the evening star by william blake william blake as the pioneer of the romantic movement of english literature has written this poem in his beautiful thematic concerns on nature nature has become one of the marvels and glories of the romantic poets as started by our own poet william blake so here the poet is addressing the evening star calling the evening star by the way what is this evening star evening star is actually one of the planets in our solar system it is the planet which is known as the planet venus so we know and i suppose that you have learned for science and all these subjects that venus is one of the most beautiful planets in this solar system now it is beautiful because it is considered one of the brightest stars in the planet so therefore this planet is known by the name the evening star why the evening star because it appears at twilight it appears in the night sky when it is neither the evening nor the night the in between time the transcending time of the evening to night it appears in the sky why does it appear before all the other stars because of its brightness it is so bright than most of the other stars in the sky so that in the absence of the sun you can see it very beautifully and in a way which is more highlighted than the other stars that's why we say and that that's why we see that this star appears first in the night sky before all the other stars the same thing goes in the morning also because this star is so bright we can see it in the morning sky as well at dawn when the sun is not yet ready to come out uh, the star because of its brightness is visual in the sky because of that it is also known by the name morning star as well so this is you might feel and you might understand is such a fascinating star especially because of its brightness so therefore the poet addresses this star in a very special manner why is this speciality because you know that in ancient times most of the people most of our ancient people have considered nature's marvels as sacred the beautiful marvelous wonderful things of nature are considered as sacred things worshipable things so the same had happened with the brightness of the evening star also the ancient romans had thought this was quite fascinating this was quite wonderful and they have believed that this star is none other than the goddess venus who is considered to be the goddess of love so according to roman mythology the evening star is believed to be the goddess venus the goddess of love so therefore we know that we can understand that the evening star which is quite visible in the twilight as well as during dawn is none other than the goddess venus according to the mythical beliefs of the romans so these roman mythical beliefs we also adhere to we also feel like accepting so that's what william blake had also done when he was writing this poem he had accepted the mythological idea of romans thinking and considering and worshiping this evening star the planet venus as the goddess of love that's what he had done to this poem so here in this poem he tries to get closer 
to the evening star by sending her a message. Her, yes, she is feminine because she is considered as a goddess. So, William Blake sends a message. Nice, interesting, fascinating, isn't that so? Writing a message, maybe a letter, maybe a, as in modern times, maybe an email, most probably. So, sending an email or writing a letter to the evening star, such a fascinating idea. So, let's see what he is going to say to the evening star. If you were also given a chance to write a letter to the evening star, what would you ask for? Yes, I know numerous things would come to your mind. But let's see what had Blake thought of. So, let's get started. The poet says, Thou fair haired angel of the evening. So, that's how he starts to address the evening star. Thou, that means you, according to the archaic language. Archaic language means old English. Those days, the language was a little bit different. So, thou fair-haired angel, that means you, fair-haired angel of the evening star. So, you are the fair-haired angel. You are an angel. Angel means you are the messenger of God. That means you are with good bills. You are with good motives. You are going to do some good to the world. So, you are the messenger of God. You are not just a messenger, you are not, not just an angel, you are one of the most beautiful angels. Why? Because this angel, the goddess Venus, has got silvery hair around her head. What is this silvery hair? The, the silver rays emitted by the star, the silver light emitted by the star. So that's how the poet addresses the star. Thou fair-haired angel of the evening, now whilst the sun rests on the mountain. Now this is the time of the sun resting. The sun is going to retire. Why is it going to retire? Because it is so tired with the hard day's toil. He had been working throughout the day, working so hard in the sky. Now it's time for him to get some rest, to retire. So on the mountain top, it had come down gradually to sit on a mountain top from the summit of the sky down to the mountain top. The sun had come just to retire to take a nap. Nice, isn't that so? So whilst, whilst means while, while the sun rests on the mountain, what is the invitation that goes to the evening star? While the sun is resting, Light thy bright torch of love. So that is the idea. Blake tells the evening star, please enlighten the world. Light your bright torch of love. So you have got a torch with you because you are emitting such bright powerful light from you. So switch on that light. So this light is not only light, it is actually love. How come this light becomes love? Don't forget because this planet is the goddess of love. So the light emitted by the goddess of love means love itself. She is capable of sending love along with light. So such a nice metaphor you find there. Light thy bright torch of love. Thy radiant crown put on. So the next idea is crown. So once you hear the word crown, what do you get the image? What image do you get? The image of royalty. So if you wear a crown on your head, you are the king or the queen. So what is this next invitation? Be the queen of the night sky. You are the queen of the night sky because the king is resting. King has retired. Now this is your hour, your time, your night. So be the queen there by wearing the radiant crown. And smile upon our evening bed. What is this evening bed? Our evening bed. So that word our is significant. Why is that? Because this evening bed does not belong only to me or only to you. It belongs to all of us. So what is this evening bed which belongs to every one of us? Actually, it is the earth at night. So everyone is asleep. All human beings, all other creatures, many of the other creatures except the nocturnal creatures, 
all of them are a slave. So this bed is the bed of earth during night time. So the poet asks to smile upon this evening bed. Smile means bless upon our evening bed. We need your blessings during night time. We are so unprotected. We are so out of love. We don't get love enough. So we need your love and we need your protection. So bless us with your love and protection. That is the idea. Then next he goes to another beautiful idea. That is, he says, And while thou drawest the blue curtains of the sky, shatter thy silver dew on every flower that shuts its sweet eyes in timely sleep. Such a long sentence. No? So you have to keep on reciting this entire part of the poem in order to get the meaning of it. So the poem says, While you draw us the blue curtains of the sky, what are these blue curtains of the sky? Maybe it is the sky itself or rather it may be the clouds of the sky. So you are there penetrating the blue curtains of the sky. You are drawing the blue curtains, the blue clouds apart from the sky. And by doing so, you peep into our world. You just peep into our world with your bright light, with your bright rays, silvery bright rays. So while thou drawest the blue curtains of the sky, shatter thy silver dew. So you have to scatter your silver dew, spread your silver dew on every flower that shuts its sweet eyes. So there are so many flowers in our world. There are so many flowers in our world which have sweet eyes in them. They have got sweet eyes it seems. So scatter your dew, your sacred dew on each and every one of these flowers. Who do you think are these flowers? Flowers are normally is a common metaphor for young children. So maybe the poet is referring to young children. Or maybe the poet is referring to the vulnerable, innocent creatures on earth who are helpless, who needs the protection of someone else. So maybe young children or maybe the vulnerable, innocent creatures on earth, including innocent men. And so you have to give them, scatter on them your sacred dew. That might be a protection for them. So such a beautiful idea, such a fascinating idea forwarded there. So they are actually in timely sleep. So this timely sleep also indicates more towards the perspective of young children. Young children are the ones who are readily, uh, readily, who would readily sleep at any uh, environmental condition. So they are the ones who fall into timely sleep. So maybe to rather to that perspective, young children. Okay, so let's move on. And he says, let thy west wind sleep on thy leg. What's this west wind? West wind is looked upon by most of the great literary uh, figures as something which is stormy, dangerous and disastrous. It brings disaster because it is such a rough wind which comes, uh, which comes to earth, which circles around the earth, planet earth and makes everything destroy. So you have to keep the west wind lulled on the lake. Don't let it be awakened. Just make it sleep on the lake. Why is this pleading with the evening star, angel of love? Because if the west wind is awakened, there might occur a great disaster to the sleeping earth, sleeping world. So he does not want to make these innocent creatures suffer in such a 
whirlpool in such a stormy wind. So he asked the west wind to be lulled by the power of the goddess of love. So he is very much concerned about the innocent earthlings. Isn't that so? So let thy west wind sleep. And one, another one of the requests, speak silence through glimmering eyes. So you have got shining eyes. Your eyes are even glimmering in your brightness. So just make it possible to speak silence. So this is such a fascinating, fabulous device that Blake is entertaining here. Speak silence. On one hand, it becomes a paradox. And on the other hand, it becomes an alliteration. How come it becomes a paradox? Speaking silence, two opposite things together. So what happens if you speak silence? You don't, you won't hear anything at all. If you are speaking silence, that means if you are promoting silence, you won't hear anything, you will hear nothing. No, speak silence, paradoxical. And at the same time, speak silence. When I pronounce this, speak silence. Sir, sir. The sibilance of sir is actually an alliteration. This alliterated phrase suggests the hushing into silence. Hushing the world into silence. S -s hushing the world into silence. So the silence is twice emphasized to this device in this paradox and as well as the alteration used. Marvelous device. So speak silence with thy glimmering eyes. Does thou withdraw soon for soon? Does thou, the, does thou withdraw? What do you mean by that? Soon for soon means quickly, very quickly, very soon. You will withdraw. You will withdraw means as if Withdrawing is when do you withdraw? When you are getting defeated from a battle, isn't that so? When you are getting defeated from a battle, you withdraw. So here, the evening star, the goddess Venus, has crowned herself in the night sky in the absence of the, uh, the real king. Because while the real king was resting, while he was retired, into his rest, she had crowned herself. So it was a kind of a struggle, a fight, a power struggle. So very soon you will have to withdraw. Very soon you will have to get defeated because we know the sun is more powerful than the evening star. Sun, sun is the brightest and the sun has the greatest of powers of all within our solar system. So very soon the sun will come up into the sky after his retirement. Then you will have to withdraw. That is the reality. Although we enjoy the soft, smooth uh, royalty governance, the soft and smooth governance of the evening star, the goddess of love, we will have to succumb to the powers of the harsh scorching sun isn't that so this is the reality this is the uh, way of the power struggle the person the side which has the greatest of power would soon crown the world that's what happens in the reality so we know that you are going to get defeated so so soon so before that you have a task to complete. What is that task? You have to wash the dust with silver. You have to wash away this darkness with your silvery rays. You have to wash away the darkness of the world. It is a kind of a metaphorical darkness. Maybe this darkness be the evil, uh, evil forces of the world. So you have to wash away these bad things with your silvery rays. That means with your love. That means enable love to this world so that the bad thing, things or the hatred would be washed away. Got it? Right. So wash the darkness with silver and soon for soon you'll have to uh, be defeated. Then the point says, the wolf rages wild 
and the lion glares to the dun forest. What about these images, two images, wolf and lion? They are symbolic of evil forces. Wolf, you know, a very rude creature, ferocious creature and lion is even more ferocious than wolf. So these are the evil forces. So once you are absent from royalty, once you are absent, you, once you are defeated from your governance, it will, the, it will be the time of bad forces, evil forces, such as wolves and lions. And there's another interpretation of this lion glaring through the dun forest. Another interpretation, that other interpretation is, lion is equal to the sun, it seems. So this yellowish golden color lion uh, glaring through the dun forest, dun means dark brown, dark color forest, is equal to the arrival of the sun, sun's arrival in the sky. So that is also another interpretation which is available. And so once these evil forces also come in your absence, the fleeces of our flock are covered with thy sacred dew. Protect them with thine influence. That's Blake's final request from the evening star. So Blake is well aware that the evening star is going to be defeated from this battle of power. But before you go down, before you withdraw, just give us this benefit. Just give us this blessing. Our flock are so innocent. Flock, what is this flock? Flock is the flock of sheep. So sheep, we know, are very innocent creatures. So the sheep on this world, on this planet Earth, that means the innocent living creatures on Earth, so they are to be covered with your sacred dew because they need your protection so much. They are so vulnerable. They are so innocent. So they need your protection. They need your love. So cover them with your sacred dew. And you have to protect them with your own influence. For them, there is no other salvation. There is no other way of escape but your love so that is the idea the poet is uh, imparting with so therefore that is the idea of the entire poem now let's take a quick look at the devices that the poet has been using throughout the poem so when it comes to devices i can show you three major devices one set is the imagery, the second set is personification and the third set is symbolism. When it comes to imagery, imagery can be broken down further into visual images, kinesthetic images and auditory images. The poem is so very full of visual images such as thou fair haired angel of the evening, and another example, light thy bright torch of love, put on the radiant crown. So such beautiful visual images are presented by the poet. And other than these visual images, you have got some kinesthetic, kinesthetic images. That is, these uh, actions, the movements suggested. The poet suggests a lot of movements for the goddess of love. What are these movements? Put on your radiant crown. Smile upon our evening bed. Uh, shuts their sweet eyes in timely sleep. So a lot of movements are suggested. And wash the dusk away with your silver lines. So wash, shut, uh, put on, smile. So these are the keen aesthetic images which uh, shows us a lot of movements. And then the auditory image. The most special thing about this is only one auditory image is suggested. Can you think what it is? Yes, you are correct. That is silence. So here the poet is emphasizing on silence. Why does the poet emphasize on silence? Because for a cosy, happy, contented, good night sleep, you need silence. So sleep is essential to us. Metaphorically, this sleep may be the comfort, the solace of life. 
right? So we need, all of us need this solace into our lives. Not only man, even other creatures also, they need this solace. So to have solace, the world should be silent. Silent of what? Silent of all the troubles, all the burdens of life, all the dangers of life, all the risks of life. So the entire world should be hushed from these burdens, risks and troubles for the creatures to have a free and happy life. So those are the images suggested by the poet. And personification, I think that you have observed that there are so many uh, lines of personification. Sun is personified, he is tired and re retiring now. And once again, it is coming back as the lion glaring to the dun forest. And flowers are also personified. Flowers have got uh, eyes, sweet eyes, and they have shut their eyes. And of course, uh, the planet uh, Venus is so personified. You are the goddess, right? Come to the night sky, be the queen of the night sky personification. And then we have got a lot of symbols also. Wolf, lion, and the west wind as the symbols of evil forces. Flowers as the symbol of innocence and sheep also. So there are so many. Uh, torch of love, no, that is also a symbol and rather it is, extends into a metaphor as well. And even you can take uh, fair-haired angel as a metaphor also. So there are uh, so many devices which comes under the categories of, which come under the categories of imagery, personification and Sim symbolization and to move on to the themes there are three main themes in this poem the first and the foremost is i think as i feel is the nocturnal beauty of nature how beautiful nature is within the night time although we are all asleep we are not aware of the beauties hidden beauties of night time nature earth is so full of beauteous things so the beautiful images the nocturnal beauty of nature is being suggested second theme is the pastoral simplicity so what is this pastoral simplicity people are so innocent, so innocent. the rustic lives are so innocent rustic <coughs> people and not only the rustic people the creatures are also so innocent and also this innocence is seen as at the same time a kind of vulnerability. They need the protection of a goddess, a divine blessing because they are vulnerable. They are so inferior uh, and they have to have the potential, sorry, they are so inferior and they are impotent to secure or safeguard themselves. So they need the protection of a divine spirit so that one the second theme thirdly the political entrapment so this talks about politics as well the power struggle we saw how the evening star battled with the ferocious sun no and during the governance of the evening star the entire world became a cradle everybody slept well everybody was full of solace but soon their solace was destroyed, threatened, risked because the ferocious sun once again crowned the sky. So this power struggle is beautifully depicted and also it suggests in a metaphorical and implicit manner that good governance does not, uh, does not uh, stay longer periods of times. Good governance does not stay long. That idea is also suggested. I hope that uh, this is uh, quite enough for you. This would be rather a long video. But anyway, I hope that you have understood. If you have any problems, just comment down below. Please subscribe and let me uh, further engage with you in this, uh, in this type of another video. Goodbye. Have a nice time.